the seller's email had actually gotten hacked into either right before or right as this process was going on. So we receive an email from who we believe, who it appears to be the seller, saying, hey, you know, I'm going to have my funds wired. And they send us these wiring instructions. Well, the wiring instructions are for telling us to wire money to Lakeisha Grant in Joliet, Illinois, who banks with a bank named TCF. So my first question is, wait a minute now, we've got an LLC, a corporation in California, asking us to wire money to an individual in Illinois. This individual has no ownership in the company, we discovered, and you know had no idea where this all came from. Um, when we finally contacted by phone the seller, um, the one who had, the person we've been dealing with all along, she said, I didn't send anything. And she, that's when she had told us their emails had gotten hacked um, in recent weeks. So um, we were able to divert this. Thank goodness no money was lost, but this was just over $60,000 that could potentially have been lost um, by us. And of course, you know, if I'm sending a wire out and it goes out wrong, that's on me. That's a, a, a tough pill to swallow and losing $60,000 is just not something that I'm ready to do. Um, unfortunately, I do have a good friend in uh, Florida who owns a title agency and his company had something similar happen to them. They did fall for it. They did send the money to the tune of $2.2 million. And that's a tough pill to swallow. Not for me. Okay, this next instance, um, this actually just happened about a month ago, no, two months ago. Um, and um, we were handling a transaction for the Mandeville office. And um, on just the day or two before closing, the buyer receives an email from what appears to be the realtor. In that email, the it also appears that the uh, mortgage company was copied on it and two Bayou title employees were copied on it. However, all four email addresses were fake. The hacker had created four different email addresses so that this buyer would think everyone was in on it. Um, in the email, the hacker asked the buyer um, to wire the funds to expedite closing. And that is um, that amount was actually just over $45,000 they were asking this person to wire. Now, luckily, the buyer said something's not right here and contacted the mortgage company, who then said, oh, no, 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 wait, this is not happening. This is not what uh, we wanted to do. This, these, this is not real. Um, I know this, if you're looking at the screenshot here that I have of my PowerPoint um, and looking at the wiring instructions, it's really hard to read. But the only thing here that, um, other than this being totally fraudulent, the only thing that I could find in this uh, wire and instructions was that the phone number from my Mandeville office is wrong. Everything else on here, like I said, other than it being fraudulent, you know, it's got my logo on it, it's got my address on it, it's even got the customer's name at the bottom. So, I mean, these hackers are getting more and more uh, just, doing more and more things to try and get it to look real to you. And honestly, you know, just an average person looking at this, you know, would maybe wouldn't think the wires are. There was a case in New York where a New York Supreme, uh, a New York just Supreme Court judge, excuse me, um, fell victim to this herself and wired out $1.2 million. Now, if a Supreme Court justice can fall victim to this, you know, an everyday person off the street could almost certainly fall victim for this, especially in today's day and age when we rely so much on email communication. And just another reason why you need to make sure and let your, your customers know as well. The next one we had um, came up about a year ago. And um, once again, if you're looking at my screen here uh, in the presentation, we were doing a closing um, both a listing agent and selling agent worked for Gardner Realtors um, here locally. And um, day before closing, we get an email from 
the selling agent saying she can't attend closing. Can we wire the funds? And the listing agents copied on it. And we receive a check from them in this email saying, here's our, a copy of our check. This is our account number, the routing number, who we deal with and all. And this is where we want you to send the money. The only problem is it's fake. We knew for a fact that Gardner Realtors banks with Capital One. And this was from Wells Fargo. So they went so far as to create a fake check to send to us to try and get us to wire this money out. And this money was just over $30,000 real estate commission. So how can you protect yourself on all of these things? First and foremost, like I said, and I keep saying, please educate your clients. But at the same time, most companies should have a secure corporate email for you to use. Um, these personal email accounts, like just when you go and create your free Gmail account or whatnot, that is not secure. That is how hackers get into the system and infiltrate these transactions is if you're using personal email. So I encourage you, make sure you're using some form of secure email communication in the form of a corporate email account. We have, cor we have secure email here. We have two-step authentication, meaning if I sign in from a different advice, device rather, excuse me, um, I get an email, I mean, I get a text message on my phone to make sure it is me actually logging in and that someone hasn't tried to hack into my system. Um, we pay for that. It's not something that's free. So that's why it is more secure than just creating your own personal Gmail account. But um, it is definitely what you need to be doing to make sure you're protecting yourselves and you're protecting your clients as well. Um, now, just to give you a little bit more information to IC3 is the FBI's Internet Crime Division, and they were established in 2000 to specifically monitor Internet crimes, especially such as things as cyber fraud. Now, since 2000, they have had nearly 5 million complaints. And in 2019, alone, IC3 received 467,361 complaints for losses exceeding 3.5 billion. That's 3.5 billion. It's very scary. So in Louisiana alone, 2019, from IC3, there were a total of 3,804 victims with losses totaling $24 million. 230 of those victims were the victims of email hacking, BEC business email compromise. And those losses totaled 11 mil, just over $11 million. And it's way too close for Cumbra. Um, 160 of the victims are here in Louisiana with losses totaling just over $7 million were from what they call confidence romance fraud. And what that is is targeting the elderly, trying to convince them that you're Prince Charming or Princess Charming from across the world that you've only met on the internet wants to wire you money for you to send to them and so forth. And we also been hearing that with everybody kind of being stuck at home with this coronavirus going on, that fraudsters are also targeting the elderly who may not be having daily or communication with family members and they're just kind of sitting at home bored to death and get taken advantage of. So keep in mind that, you know, for your loved ones especially, you know, let them know, don't be giving out their personal information, don't be sending money out if it, you know, don't be cashing a check that they did, that they got because they sold something online. They take, there's a lot of different ways to take advantage of things like that. And then lastly, just threw this in there, 64 victims last year in Louisiana were from uh, victims of real estate rental fraud for um, just under a million dollars, which is also scary, but it is something that we see in our world on a day-to-day -day basis. So. so, any questions for anyone? Oh, 
We have Miss Joy raising her hand. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, mm -hmm. go ahead. I just have a quick question about the uh, fraud in where someone can steal your title to your home. Uh huh. Can you talk about that a little bit. Well, um, do you, did you hear? Are you hearing something specific or just different things in general? Well, there's actually a TV commercial that's been advertising on that. Is that what you're exactly. referring to? Exactly. Yeah, I think, obviously, oh, yeah. if I can jump in, this is Brent. Um, I think whether it's part of that scare, but I think part of it is if someone does steal your identity, they could, in fact, uh, try to convince someone to loan them money on your property. Now, ultimately, uh, if you did not participate in that, then you would, you would, uh, you know, ultimately would be made whole by someone, you would think. But um, I, we're not hearing much of that. I mean, now okay. I you, well, we are, we are seeing some fraud. Um, and, I, and I've told people for years that, you know, God help everybody if I ever went rogue, because I could find ways to create titles and, and, and make things happen. And we, we have seen some, some people filing some documents that are obviously false, but it seems like it's been designed to maybe clear up some title issues. Uh, not as much as blatant as me just trying to sell your house. Uh, but right. that, that I think the thing is called title lock. I think it's what's been advertised on TV. Yeah, through life lock. Right, and 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 I think it's uh, I mean, there's, there's a concern because even if I mean, obviously, I always joke with people. I said if you, I learned in law school a long time ago, if you don't if you don't own it, you can't sell it. So clearly, if you didn't ever sign anything to transfer a title, then you would still own it. But there would still be the aggravation of someone having to come back and undo it. Uh, the fact that. You know, if there's another mortgage on your property that you didn't participate in, um, and the burden may still be on you to help ha have them prove it, you know, that it, that it belongs there, which they couldn't, and then and try to find someone who, who is concerned enough to help remove it. So I guess it could be a concern, but we really haven't seen that, but I, but I have been seeing it on TV lately. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. Cindy, did you have a question as well? I saw your hand was raised. Um, I had the same question. Okay, just checking, make sure. Um, and then we have Will asking if agents should put a disclaimer in their email signature, and if so, what should it say? I think everybody should have something in there. Just basically let them know that, you know, email fraud is on the on the rise and to, you know, one of the things that I like to tell people there's very few circumstances where we would require a buyer or a seller for that matter to wire money for a closing. Um, as you know, they come to closing with a certified or a cashier's check. So that's something there. If you tell them, you know, that's not the norm to alert them uh, up front in case they do get some kind of email saying wire money, that might be something to help them out too. Um, I know sometimes with these foreclosure properties, you know, you may have a, a, a asset manager that does require them to wire money. So that's, a, but that's a little bit out of the normal and it's very unusual. Um, so we don't see it very often, but um, you know, making sure they're aware of this from day one is the best protection you can have. And then we also have uh, Ellie Keefe asking um, to basically sum up what are some of the best prevention me methods to take um, as far as protecting yourself? Well, again, using a corporate email address that's secure um, is one of the best ways to protect your email account from being hacked. Uh, change your passwords often. Um, I know it's a pain in the neck and I hate it too. And I have 12,000 passwords for different things, but um, that's always recommended as well. Um, if you have an IT person on staff, you know, have them take a look at your, your computer and it, just be a, aware if your computer's doing something that's just nor out of the normal or not looking right or just seems kind of strange, then, you know, have someone take a look at it and scan it and see if, you know, if by chance you do have something on it. Well, and also um, to kind of piggyback on the, the password recommendations and changing them a lot. Um, I know a lot of people have been on social media now that we're all kind of either stuck in our homes or sitting at work. 
Um, and there's a lot of these quizzes popping up with, hey, what's your favorite color? What's your dog's name? What's your, your mom's nickname? Yeah. What's your childhood nickname? Um, that's basically kind of baiting people into giving away hints um, of what their personal account passwords could potentially be. So just be very aware of um, what you're sharing to Facebook. I know it's everybody trying to have fun and, and take these different quizzes and socialize over social media, but some of that stuff is what the hackers do target to try to figure out your account passwords and, and hack in that way. I can make a comment as well. This is Brent again. Uh, you know, I, I teach a lot of CEOs, I'm sure a lot of y'all know, and, and I tell people our bigger concern does not someone getting into our bank accounts and taking money It's someone convincing us to send it to the wrong place. And that's really where you gotta be careful. You know, we, we we're concerned all the time uh, about payoffs that we get in and just any, any communication, you know, as uh, dealing with COVID-19 right now, there's an there's a increasing number of realtors that may not be attending a closing. So we've been wiring a lot of commissions and yeah, I've personally been trying to vet every one of them. And, and, and while it's an extra, layer of uh, aggravation, uh, pretty much everyone I've reached out to has said thank you because they realized that they would rather verify one more thing and get the money in the right place than to have me send it to the wrong place. And that's, it's, it's one of those things that even with, you know, everyone focused on COVID-19, I promise you the, the uh, cyber theft people are not taking any time off. And, you know, when money is gone, it's, it's hard to stop. And even when you have insurance, largely that may not work well for you because it depends on, on how the money was taken, you know, how it was, you know, who did what first. And there's deductibles. So I think for anyone to think, well, I have insurance for that, I should be fine. I would, I would almost look at insurance as be something that may catch you some money back on the back end. But there's, it's, it's very possible that uh, the insurance you have may not, may not cover any losses you sustain. Do we have any last questions before we wrap up? Okay, Brent, here's a question for you. Um, are you able to see the chat or you want me to read it out? I'll probably can. Uh, how do you see the uh, there we economic go. depression impacting the legal, illegal wholesalers in our market? Um, fearful the abuse will rise. Um, I tell you, I, I wish I had a crystal ball. Uh, I would, it would probably make a lot of money with it. But uh, I, I think, um, I think we've been fortunate. I, I tell you, just from our standpoint, we've been fairly busy. Uh, I was just on the phone earlier this morning with uh, one of the, the higher ups with First American, and and uh, I was asking him what he's hearing. And, and people are staying pretty busy. But I think, um, to your point. I think uh, eventually as this works its way through the system, there are gonna be people more tempted to do bad things. So I think we all have to be kind of on alert as to, uh, and be more vigilant. I tell you, I, I, I've never been a negative person, but I, I approach uh, my exams more negatively now. If I see something that doesn't look or smell right, then I'm gonna ask other questions and, and go a little bit further and look at that. If that concerns someone, then I apologize, but I wanna make sure that we have the right people selling properties, the right people getting money. And I do, you know, I do agree that there probably will be some fraudsters out there uh, seeking uh, increased opportunity to, to steal someone's uh, property um, or to, to try to force them or fake them into doing something that they otherwise wouldn't do. So I think we all need to be vigilant and mindful that uh, that it's out there and just you know hey there's nothing wrong with asking a question I mean I tell you I've been I've been practicing law for what 26 years now and you think at some point you know everything like look I don't I find I ask more questions the longer I practice than I did early on because early on I guess maybe I figured well I don't want them to think I'm stupid so I'm not going to ask questions now you could argue that well hell I don't want to ask questions because I should know everything but you know what I'd rather ask a question and ask it twice and get it right, which is a lot easier to do than to try to apologize later on because you did the wrong thing. So I think that's, we just, we just need to watch and, and, and just uh, question everything. If it doesn't look right, it's probably not right. And just go from there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, all right, guys, so it's 1030. We're gonna go ahead and wrap up. Um, thank you guys again so much for attending um, our first webisode um, of the Bayou Connection series. Um, we do have one planned for next week. Um, we're gonna have Ed Rowley with House Call Home Inspection join us um, from 10 to 10.30. 
Um, I will have the email blast to register sent out for that um, sometime today or tomorrow. Again, if you do have questions about the topic for today, um, feel free to shoot an email over to kathyl at buyutitle.com. Um, and if you have any suggestions,